magic items. It was a vicious and bloody battle, but through teamwork and perseverance, you managed to kill the great and powerful sorcerer. Standing over his corpse, the wizard in your adventuring party grabs the dead man's magical staff, while the thief starts pulling a few rings off of his fingers. While several of them look rather ornate, fitted with precious gems, one is curiously austere. Before you can stop them, the thief slides the plain ring onto their finger, and soon finds that they cannot remove it. Unbeknownst to the party, this ring is cursed with a powerful magical effect, and only time will tell its dread effects, with the thief learning a very vital lesson in the process. Not all magical items are beneficial. Magic is an unimaginably potent concept in Dungeons & Dragons, capable of doing everything from healing the injured, to snuffing out a life force, to moving mountains and more. Most often, magic is wielded directly by those capable of doing so, flinging spells from their hands that they've learned through genetics, education, or some sort of pact. Other times, though, magic has been imbued into some sort of object for a purpose, ranging from fiery swords to magical armor to rings that can summon demons. There's no way to compile a collection of every magic item in D&D, as there is quite literally an endless list of possibilities, both official and unofficial. In this video though, I want to highlight a handful of interesting items, starting with some more common magic items, then some powerful artifacts, and finally some rather unusual ones. Let's start with an item that easily ranks among the most ubiquitous and well-known magical items in D&D, the Bag of Holding. A typical Bag of Holding appears as a common sack, but the interior of the bag contains an extra-dimensional space, allowing the bag to hold far more than a mundane sack. Depending on the version, a Bag of Holding can range in size from a medium-sized pouch to a large burlap sack but the average bag of holding possesses the capability of holding up to 500 pounds of objects in its interior. Other versions do exist, capable of holding less or much more. Generally, all it takes to retrieve an item from the bag is to simply think of it and reach your hand in, with problems arising if you don't know the contents of the bag. In some cases, it's still possible to rummage around and find things, while in others, it requires you to dump out the entire contents of the bag by turning it inside out. It's also noted that living creatures can be placed inside of the bag without harm, although there's only a limited amount of oxygen inside. If the bag is ruptured or torn, either from the inside or outside, one of a couple things could happen. One is all the contents simply dump out and the bag is now useless or all the contents could be lost, typically scattered away across another dimension. Similar items to the Bag of Holding include the Handy Haversack, which is essentially just a smaller Bag of Holding, and the Portable Hole, which is a piece of cloth that can be placed on a surface to create a hole to an extra dimensional space, 10 feet deep. If any of these items are placed inside of another, Typically a rift to the astral plane is opened, which will suck in both objects and their contents, and often everything within a small radius around them. This process can occasionally be weaponized if the situation calls for it, and a well-known contraption referred to as the Arrowhead of Total Destruction involves an arrow that forces a portable hole into a bag of holding upon collision. Moving on, another popular and fun little magic item is the Immovable Rod, a flat iron rod with a button on one end. When the button is pressed, the immovable rod becomes utterly fixed in place, regardless of position or the effects of gravity. Only two things can deactivate the rod, pressing the button on the end again, or if more than 8,000 pounds of weight are applied to the rod. The rod can also be moved a short distance by someone of tremendous strength. The immovable rod is a magical item of extreme simplicity in design, but it allows for an incredible amount of creativity from its wielders. It can be used to bar a door open or closed, to injure or damage a moving object, to stop a fall, 
two of them can be used to climb any distance, and the list goes on, limited only by imagination. Another fun one with some inventive uses is the Decanter of Endless Water, a magical flask that, when opened, will produce an endless stream of water of different intensities. Essentially, the flask contains a portal to the elemental plane of water that is opened via the use of a command phrase. Saying the word stream will cause the flask to emit one gallon of water every six seconds or so. Fountain produces five gallons every six seconds in a five foot long stream, and Geyser causes the flask to emit 30 gallons every six seconds in a 20 foot long stream. The geyser effect will move the flask backwards with force, requiring it to be either restrained or held by a sturdy individual. It's capable of harming and knocking down other individuals and objects with the force of the geyser. The only thing that can stop the decanter is repeating the command word. Endless amounts of anything can give rise to all sorts of interesting scenarios, but the decanter can be used to provide endless drinking water, put out fires, flood a building or dungeon, propel a water vessel, find certain traps, power devices such as a water wheel or water clock, or you can get really inventive by combining it with something like a fire elemental to produce massive amounts of steam. The list goes on. Plenty more common magical items exist, ranging from such minor things as a mug that always keeps drinks cool and a coin that always comes up heads to more potent effects, such as cloaks of invisibility, circlets of telepathy, boots of water walking, and figurines that summon various animals and creatures. Let's move on to taking a brief look at some far more valuable and powerful magical artifacts, things that exist in legends and myths, owned by gods and demon lords. The deity known as Vecna is likely the most famous lich to ever exist a once mortal individual that obtained enough power to ascend to godhood. Vecna is responsible for several dark and very powerful magical artifacts, the first of which is the Book of Vile Darkness, an evil tome written by Vecna that can literally change a good-hearted person's personality to that of an evil one. The book contains all manner of dark rituals and instructions, such as how to become a lich or death knight various powerful magics and incantations, and information about different demons and devils. It makes the owner grow more powerful, but also more hideous and monstrous, as well as gradually destroying everything around it. At one point, most of Vecna's physical body was destroyed, but his spirit lived on. All that remained behind of his body were his left hand and one of his eyes. Each of these possessed enough of Vecna's power to be considered artifacts in their own right, but in order to gain this power, one must remove their own body part and replace it with Vecna's. If either part is ever removed from the individual's body though, they will die. With the eye, an individual could gain a degree of eyesight possessed by very few, capable of seeing through any kind of darkness and illusion, as well as invisible creatures or objects and even the ability to see through solid objects entirely. An individual also gained access to a handful of powerful spells, such as Disintegrate and Dominate Monster, but there is a small chance upon using these spells that Vecna will tear your soul from your body and devour it, leaving you as a husk to be controlled by the Arch Lich. The Hand of Vecna grants a person great strength and power in combat, as well as access to spells such as Finger of Death and Teleport. Each time you cast a spell from the hand, however, it attempts to persuade you to commit an evil act. If an individual has both the eye and the hand, they become even more powerful, becoming immune to poisons and diseases, receiving premonitions of danger, regenerating their health if injured, can have a wish granted once a month, and can touch a creature to attempt to turn their bones to jelly. It's said that the only way to ever destroy the two body parts permanently is to slay an individual using them with the legendary sword of Kaz, which belonged to Vecna's right-hand man who betrayed him. 
Dragons are some of the most fearsome creatures in existence, and in ancient times, the evil chromatic dragons waged a great war against mortal kind. To combat the dragons, five orbs of dragon kind were created by a group of powerful wizards. Each orb contains the essence of a dragon, so a weak-willed individual that uses the orb risks the contained dragon mentally suggesting them to carry out its desires. Attuning to an orb allows an individual to cast a handful of spells, but more notably allows them to send a telepathic call to every evil dragon within 40 miles, compelling them to come towards the orb. The ancient wizards used this ability to lure in dragons to kill them, but whether or not you could accomplish the same thing is up in the air. Other powerful artifacts include the Sphere of Annihilation that utterly destroys everything it touches, the Wand of Orcus that possesses the incredible necromantic power of Orcus, the Lord of the Undead, the Rod of Seven Parts gives a wielder incredible magical abilities if they combine all of the parts together, including flight, shape changing, and the ability to control the weather, and finally there's the Deck of Many Things. The Deck of Many Things doesn't generally qualify as an artifact, as more than one could exist at the same time, but it is very rare and quite powerful. A deck of many things consists of either 13 or 22 cards, and before you draw from the deck, you must declare how many cards you intend to draw. You must then draw this number of cards, otherwise they will be drawn regardless, simultaneously, after a certain amount of time. Each card drawn carries with it a powerful effect, so I won't go over all 22 of them, but just mention the interesting ones. The balance card flips the drawer's personal alignment to the opposite end. The Don John card causes the drawer to become entombed in an extra dimensional sphere until rescued. The Fates card lets you avoid or undo any single event, and the Flames card grants the drawer a powerful demon ally. The Moon card gives you a few casts of the Wish spell. The Rogue card makes a random or not so random individual hostile to you. The Ruin card takes away every form of wealth you possess, while the Talon card destroys every magic item you possess. Other effects possible include making you stronger, or dumber, or wealthier. Generally, you're more likely to draw a negative effect than a positive one but the allure of the positive effects can be strong for some. Let's finish by looking at a few less common magical items that are much more unusual than things like the Bag of Holding or the Immovable Rod. The Alchemy Jug is a ceramic jug that can spontaneously produce a large quantity of a limited number of different liquids. While things like water, oil, and acid have some pretty clear benefits, the inclusion of things like vinegar and mayonnaise raise a bit of an eyebrow. The Ring of Contrariness causes the wearer to become unable to agree with any idea, statement, or action, which some players seem to be equipped with by default. The Brooch of Number Numbing forces anyone who looks at it to forget the meaning of numbers, so they wouldn't be able to tell how much a certain quantity is, or whether one number was greater than another. The Bowl of Watery Death causes anyone who pours water into it to risk being shrunk down to the size of an ant and fall down into the bowl, where they will then drown a short time later unless rescued by magic, as they cannot be physically removed. The Robe of Vermin looks like a protective magical cloak by all appearances, but when worn into combat, the wearer is beset by countless insect bites from the interior of the robe. This makes it incredibly difficult to perform practically any task in combat, and the robe can only be removed with magic. The Wand of Wonder is a very entertaining magic wand that, when used, will cause a highly random effect to occur, ranging from a strong gust of wind, to an elephant appearing, to enlarging the target or shrinking yourself, creating a forceful blast of precious gems, or making a random object in the area disappear into the ethereal plane. For those interested in the wide world of farming, the Bountiful Spade grants a character who uses it to turn over the earth prior to planting a field 
a plus three bonus on their agriculture proficiency check for that entire year. Finally, the bag of beans is a cloth bag containing a handful of large beans. If the bag is dumped out, the beans will all explode, grievously wounding anyone nearby. However, if you remove a bean one at a time, plant it in the ground, and water it, a minute later it will cause something to grow. The result is rather random, but generally it's quite negative for most people nearby, with evil treants appearing, a group of shriekers or a boulette, or even a large pyramid containing a mummy lord. Some more positive effects include a geyser that shoots out berries or beer, a campfire that lasts 24 hours, a fruit tree that grows magical fruit, or even a giant beanstalk that grows up into the sky or other dimensions. Magical items are one of the greatest aspects of Dungeons & Dragons, objects of pure imagination that can do anything from make a small exchange between characters a little bit more interesting, or be the focus of an entire campaign of adventures. Magic items mean different things to different players, with some itching to plunder a dungeon to find a new magical axe, while others marvel at the possibilities of an immovable rod or a rope of climbing. While this was only a very, very small sampling of some magic items that have appeared throughout the history of D&D, there really is no limit to the breadth of these types of objects. Aside from all of the various creatures, magic items are some of those things that make D&D what it is.